it's Mrs. Whitaker. Today's lesson, I'm going to teach you how to interview somebody and hopefully you will learn about somebody um, very special. Also, just think about if we were in school right now, I would be teaching you about different women of courage. Normally in schools, we always learn and remember people way from the past and how they've made our lives better today. Well, I think it's also important to learn about somebody that's closer to your age, somebody who's still alive, so it to inspire you to also have courage in your life. Courage can be somebody who inspires you, somebody that's a leader, somebody who is the first to do something, somebody who uses a growth mindset, somebody who um, takes their time to teach somebody. So today we have somebody special. So tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Rue Whitaker. I am Mrs. Whitaker's daughter, um, and I race dirt bikes. I have been racing since I was 10 years old, but I have been riding since I was four. What are some challenges that you face riding motocross? Um, there's so many. It's hard to pinpoint which ones are more than the others, per se, but for me, my personal one is now that I have broken my ankle, this is my ankle, I have, so I broke this bone and this bone. So I have, I now have a metal plate with four screws and then I have a screw going up this side. So that's a challenge for me because I was already a cautious racer rider as it is. So now that I have broken my ankle this bad, it puts a toll on my mindset when it comes to going for a jump, um, going to pass someone faster or whatnot. So what are some personal disappointments? Um, now that I've broken my ankle, there's people that are now faster than me that I once was beating before. So that disappoints me in general. And I feel like that would disappoint anyone who has gone through an injury. Um, other than that, there's not really much that I find disappointing. So why, tell us, tell us about the challenges of showing up to a race. Like, what's a race like? Um, a race is a completely different atmosphere. You have people who are not nice. You have people that are beyond nice. And then you just have people in the middle. Um, there could be fluke things that happen. Like, right now, my back tire is flat. I didn't know that when I went riding on Friday. Um, Something in your motor could not be working right, causing your bike not to start. There's bolts. We just noticed that. Um, there's just so much that can lead to something going wrong on a race day. Weather is another big one. I've showed up to races and it's just pouring rain. They don't cancel it. Um, it's beyond windy. They don't cancel it. And even I've raced in 120 degree weather. It is what it is. It's a race and you go race. What is the farthest track you've ever had to travel to? Um, probably Utah. I've raced in Utah before. That was 11 hours with no traffic. And I've raced down in Southern California and with traffic that was a 12 hour drive which was not fun but fun track so I got decent journeys so yeah um so being a girl or a female why would this be harder um why would this be a sport that's hard for a girl um our body form and style is different than the guys it's just normal facts so we don't have as much natural strength as guys do so we personally have to push ourselves harder on and off the track in order to um, be where we want to be what 
what about, um, why would it be better if more girls did this? Um, it doesn't really matter, per se, that more girls do it. Like, us girls, if we want, can race with the guys. Like, it, there's no penalty to that. Um, but if we did have more girls, we'd have a bigger gate size, meaning we'd have more people in one race. And we wouldn't have to race with another group of people. What about, so the races that I've been to, the, the women or the girls are usually at the end of the race. Why, why do you think that happens? It just depends on how people set it up. Because if the last two races, I was at the beginning of the day. So it doesn't really matter. But in general, do girls usually get a nicer track? Or is it... In, in our write up before, you said something about a track being hammered. What does that mean? Well, I can't really say if it matters being a woman's race because there's other people racing with us that have the same race. And, uh, but a track does get beat, it does get hammered. And that's what everyone has to deal with. What makes a track goes, hammered? Just riding on it all day. So, how, what, so it sounds like this is a challenge for you. It doesn't sound like there's a lot of girls do it. You've had a broken ankle. Um, why keep, why keep doing it? I like to challenge myself and I'm not really scared as much. And it keeps my adrenaline up, it keeps me going. Do you, what does it feel when you do good in a race? Not necessarily getting first place, but you just feel accomplished in this place. You feel accomplished. So does it feel good because it's 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 hard and it's something is a challenge and so you have to keep working at it? Um well you have to do so much to lead up to your race. And when you do good in that race, you feel like your hard work has paid off. So if you had to tell a second grader how to use a growth mindset in sports, in anything that they do, whether you're a girl or a boy, what is something that you would tell kids? Um, don't be scared to test your limits. Um, just push yourself to be better at whatever you're doing. So a lot of people watching probably have never uh, ridden a motorcycle. So you, we have a picture of uh, somebody that you really had kind of inspired you when you were younger. Um, tell us why, what type of obstacles did she go through or what is something different about her? Like why is she in a Rebel Girls book? Why does she have a book about her? Ashley Feilich was the first ever woman to be signed a pro con contract with the company with a team and that really changed woman racing and um, she's not like most other the most other pros riders in general she's actually deaf meaning it's really hard to hear your bike well, obviously you can't hear it's really hard to know when your bike needs to shift into a better gear so she had to physically feel the vibrations of her bike when it was getting in a higher, when it was maxing out in the gear it was in. And then she also had to look for shadows of when other people were coming up on her to pass her or for her to maintain her position. So we can see why a book, why she has a book, why she's in books, why she's very mm -hmm. interesting to read about. So thank you, Reed, for giving us your time and helping me do this interview for my second graders. They appreciate it. Can you say hello to everybody? So remember, a woman of courage, you can be the first to do something. Anybody with courage, if you're the first to do something, it kind of paves the way for other people. Also, things aren't easy. Everything in your life is going to be difficult, but it's your growth mindset. How are you going to challenge yourself? How are you going to keep going? Even if you have a, what people call a challenge, an obstacle or a fallback, a broken bone, um,
Ashley's had many broken bones. Ashley was deaf and she kept doing it. Um, Ree has a broken bone, keeps doing it. You fall over, you crash, you get upset, but so, but she still does it. She still works hard for it. But thank you everybody. On, in my Google Classroom, I will post an article about Ashley and I will also post a written paper that we would have normally usually done in class. You can print it out or just read it online. But what I really would like to inspire you to do is interview somebody at home. Ask them what challenges have they had to go through in their life and what makes them a better person today or what keeps them doing things that they do. Have a great night and I'm also very, very hopeful I can post a very short video of you being able to watch somebody ride motocross. Thank you everybody. Have a good night. I miss you.